Hey guys, Repairman here. I'm going to give you a demo of our server. So I've copied the world and put it in creative uh, so I can give a, a demonstration and a breakdown of our system that I can't do as quickly and as well uh, otherwise. So anyways, this system has 512 sorters in total. There's 16 in each across in each section and four down in each section as well as eight sections all the way around uh, two on each wall. So this thing has four input chests on the corners. Input them into the trap chest and they drop put it into the dropper and rapid fired out into the water stream that goes into a, a pipe, water pipeline, put in the elevator, brought up and goes around and I'll show you how that works. We've run this server for about four years and we had a lot of help with the uh, a lot of different aspects of the system um, as far as you know I show people what we want done and it help so that way we can speed up the process of building some of this but a lot of this I had to do myself because everyone's busy with uh, you know they have their own castles and projects they want to do as well um, but anyways let's get into it so the center here I have a uh, this goes through the super furnace first uh, before it goes into the item sorter. So how that works is you drop in you know, all your items, you know, shock box full of junk that you just want sorted, you have a couple stacks of cobblestone you want to cook, you throw in here, or iron ore or whatever it is, and that gets fired into this water stream. Drop down here and rapidly goes down here because ice and water makes go very quickly. And then the trick with water streams is you need to go and have ender chest which is a little bit shy of a full block. And that'll put it in between the water stream and the hoppers so they can both go really quick in the water and be detected by all the hoppers. It'll fly down here. Now we have all these hoppers down here to pull the items out of the stream that we want to cook. There's a whole bunch of different items, you know, terracotta and sand and iron ore and potatoes and lots of items that we want to cook so we have that's why we have all these sorters down here now anything that is not being cooked like say a shaka box won't be cooked of course it's not a stackable item that'll get dropped down into this stream and then brought into the sorter the main sorter and then everything else that's going to be cooked goes across this sort this super furnace which is one of our old designs and we'll be revamping at some point when I get some time. I've got about 30 furnaces that'll cook up about uh, full inventory about roughly about six or seven minutes. This also um, has an automatic fuel system compared or detects what the fuel level is at and if it gets low it sends a signal down that way. It goes up underneath here, goes this way, comes over here, and we'll power the dust here. This rapid fire circuit is always on, but because of that torch being on, it powers the dust so that it can't rapid fire. Like if I go and break that, it'll just be pulsing, which would normally pulse that sending items down. But because there's a torch right under that dust, it won't rapid fire until that that torch is off. Now from here, those fuel blocks or coal, whatever we program that to be, whatever we have abundance of, will drop down here, come down this way, come here, over here, and everything's very tight tolerance. It's like our bulk storage is right here. We actually have a full block normally here, but moved it so I could come through, down through here, and gets put into the super furnace there. Now everything that's not cooked will go down this stream as well as everything that is cooked is put in that dropper and sent down this stream. Now besides for that also all of our other input chests there's all four of them go into that stream into the sorter as well as the item delivery system was is down here. All the rails from the nearby castles have an item delivery system that comes over here, drops, bounces off here, the shock boxes are pulled out of it, sent through their our pipelines, 
and then the non-stackable machine pulls the shock box out and unloads it and then sort it I'll in a moment so all those pipelines feed into the elevator over there as well as also the uh, down there is our non-stackable machine um, that all the items from the broken minecarts like say the minecart chest the chest is separated from the minecart there's a sorter takes the chest out of that flow and sends the chest down this way to be sorted again uh, the mine everything else which is not a stackable item is then put into the minecart storage not all that all the shock boxes unloaded and all that and all the other streams that all merge down in here go into this item elevator and get sorted in our main storage system that gets rapid fired up we have a couple chests of buffer items built up a little bit um, and we even have a emergency shutoff system so when this torch is on it also shuts off this rapid fire pulsing system here torch tower that down and I flip that switch and it powers that dust down there so it won't elevator up the stuff that's elevated up to here which goes around the entire sorter four times comes down this way and this was really the tricky part of this whole thing it was I mean well well I guess there's a lot of tricky parts of it but uh, after we designed the system itself um, then we had to go and put each of these one wide slices with four different sorters in each one wide slice and we had to pack them together have a way to get in between them and the corners have to meet up so we put them as close as possible each slice together at the ends and then tie them in together so we have to route them around in just a way so that they can merge together so this comes over here bumps into the ender chest again goes around I had to put a block here otherwise the items would fly over the ender chest that corrals them down as well as when this stream drops down a block and then goes under here we have to put a half slab there and that allows it to go under that stream so they can cross over each other now after we go around a second time and it drops down here and then goes around again we corral it over again in between and then drops down another layer crowd between goes around and then here at the very last it drops down and goes through our bulk storage system if it's not sorted by the 512 sorters like say the cobblestone over there it'll then come here and this has a sorter in it as well yeah let me uh, I'll break one of these so I can get over here this also has a sorter as you can see just the generic sorter and comes into here gets sorted and then this system will put them into a shock box comparator will detect it and when it's full the redstone block makes that comparator only turn on when that shock box is completely full then it will crush it torch will turn off because it's powered the on. and then once that is gone the comparator will turn off piston will pull up and this will turn on again because the torch is able to turn on again dispense a new shotgun box and that's even has a pipeline going into it to keep it fed with shock box so we don't have to keep feeding it all the shock boxes in the non stackable machine that are filtered out go into this pipeline here and feed all of our bulk storage so that all the players that put items in to be unloaded from the shock box feed this so we don't have to cap keep coming in here manually restocking it but just in case we have a alarm system that will tell us hey this is low on shock boxes and will light up the light over here letting us know hey it's low but since we've designed it so far it's able to keep up with our demands and hasn't lit up quite yet so we seem to be good with the uh, number of people using it as it is now after it's gone through all of these bulk storage systems which actually you know, I should mention by the way that because it's packing it into shock boxes um, 
and it's going into double chests. There's three of them. Each double chest and a hopper in total hold about 100,000 items, which means three of these chests here with three hoppers hold about 300,000 items. And there's about 10 of these. So that's 3 million items this whole room can hold in total capacity. Um, yep, so that's that. Now, after it's gone through there, then it comes down this way, passes by that, keeps coming down this way, and this is where the real magic happens, the bulk storage unit. So from here, first and foremost, anything that's stackable, like say cobblestone where some miraculously overfill out of the bulk storage system, or it's something new, like the aquatic update, and we haven't programmed it in yet, we want to pull those out first because otherwise it'll slow down the system because we delay each and every item so we can process one item at a time so we, the system doesn't break. So this here, this unit goes and separates out the stackables drop down, get dispensed down the line, and put into our, um, our overflow box. Um, and then anything that's not stackable goes into here, which is our uh, potion separator. It tries to push them into a brewing stand. If it does go into the brewing stand, then it drops into this chest, which eventually, once we have a brewing room, um, that'll be water pipe to that room, but we haven't built that yet, so that just goes into a chest there for now. Um, otherwise, then it goes into the next stage of the system, which this is where it delays the items. It will it has a powered torch there, a torch powering this block, which stops the flow, which allows the items to sit in that hopper there. When the item drops into there, powers this comparator, it will send power through, monostable circuit sends one quick pulse, turn off the torch for just enough time, two ticks, so that one item can pass through, and then that's processed. And then this will loop back in on itself, um, and then that will drop into here, comparator detects it, mon another monostable circuit, there's a uh, piston there, pops up, Ooh. There we go. Oh, that's a double. Oh. Um, so, anyways, that powers through to here. Very quick pulse directly into the dropper. If it's water, lava, it will dispense out. This repeater then delays two ticks and then hits it again, pulling that water and lava back in. If it's flint and steel, it stays there. If it's a shocker box, it pops out and it will actually stay right where this right there is where the shock box will stay which then these pistons these three will push it out first this piston at the bottom will push out first that's what that repeater does it hits that first corralling it so that that way it doesn't accidentally drop down which our first design in my last video did sometimes they once in a blue moon it would drop down and then it would jam up in the minecart station so with this dine that fixes solves that problem all right, so, and then everything else that's not a shocker box, flint and steel, water, lava, will drop down into those minecarts and be handled by the next stage of the system. All right, so then from there, these are powered, which will push the pistons out, crushing the shocker box, and corralling it into that side hopper, which will be processed and separate in the separator, it separates the filled chalk boxes from the empty, and then from here, it will also power the dust down here, which will power this repeater, turning that torch off, which allows the hopper underneath that dispenser to pull the water, lava, flint, and steel down and brings it into that chest here which then goes into the flint and steel separator, which unfortunately with the aqua update, this will probably break and I'll have to redesign this again, but we've been using this for quite a while. We probably have a good while more still until PS4 gets the aquatic update, so this will work for some time, but we gotta do some testing to come up with a new method for that. Uh, but then this will try and fire out. Now, the flint and steel 
will try to light this on fire, but because there's a sign there, it won't, so it'll stay there. The water and lava, on the other hand, they will pop out as entities and drop into that hopper, drop down, go into this machine. Um, we have a furnace there, we'll probably use a dropper in some of these designs because it's a little less lag using a dropper instead of a furnace um, for reducing hopper lag. Uh, but anyways, the uh, dispenser here will then try and dispense it out. Now, when it's lava, it will dispense out very quickly and be pulled back in, not touching this observer. The water, on the other hand, moves quicker. It will actually touch the observer, triggering it to fire, which will make this piston push out, powering this, which is a small piston extender, allows this torch to turn off, because if you just hit that really quickly, the torch won't turn off for long enough. Now with that off, it pulls that redstone block away, allowing the hopper flow when that pulls the items out of there. Instead of going over into the lava strip pipeline, it will go down into the water pipeline, separating water lava and the flint and steel getting separated in this, so that we separate all three of those and shaka boxes. Now, we want to separate the filled and full shaka boxes. So then, over here, uh, we get in here, it's a little tight, but uh, so that hopper, those three pistons there, push it into this hopper here, drop down, and then go into this dispenser, detect it here, that comparator goes into an air block so nothing gets powered but this observer detects it that because they finally decided that uh, observers not detecting observers is not a, f a feature <laughs> uh, it's a bug not a feature luckily because we've been griping about that for a while on console here but finally they did the change thank you 4j for that um, now because of that we can detect the observer powering send a pulse into this hopper which then fires that dispenser dispensing that down which is detected by that which there's a piston pushing this observer over underneath this block which powers that dust making that piston crush that as well as this is de this detects the update of that redstone dust powering this sending power into this sending another one so it just keeps on cycling between that being detected and that because if you only detect that if this was to start filling up a little too quickly it would jam up and you'd have a shaka box just sitting there and that filling up full and then this would jam up and that would not be good all right so then once it's here just before it gets crushed this comparator detects if it's full and will power this block which turns off that torch which means that that dust is able to turn off and then that hopper is able to depower which means when that is crushed there's a hopper underneath that comparator so it's able to suck it up through the comparator drops down and if it's this is depowered it'll pull down and go into the unloader if it's not filled up It'll go into this dropper here and go into the shaka box, empty shaka box silo and feed our bulk storage and our item delivery system, which is also run by shaka boxes. Now the filled shaka boxes on the other hand, those come down here, go into this chest as a buffer because it takes a while to unload. So we have a buffer so you can dump multiples in here. And they'll slowly, this slowly pulses to dispense a shock box. Of course, there's one there already there. It won't spit out, but we don't want it rapid firing to lag down the server, so we add some delay to it. That'll sit here, be unloaded, and this comparator here will detect that it's full, turning off this torch, which does nothing to this dropper that has an item in it. But as soon as it's empty, on the other hand, it will allow this to turn back on, temporarily pushing that in here, and it goes back here, which this comparator detects, sending power into this dust, making that piston crush it. Now, if you were to put it empty in here, this would do nothing. 
this would not power this dust would or this torch would stay on and it would jam and that shock box would stay there that's why it's very important we separate out the empty shock boxes with that other system now from there the items that are unloaded go up this elevator and as you saw before that gets sent into this stream and into the elevator over there as well as the shock box that's crushed goes back into that stream goes around the sorter four times and back in here detected as empty and goes into the bulk storage system and item to the race system all right so that handles shock boxes water flint and steel lava loaded and uh, are filled and unfilled shock boxes now for the boats and mine carts and and then all the other junk that goes through the system, like air um, tools and armor. So the mine carts will go here, and because there's a rail here, they'll pop up and roll down this as actual rolling items. Roll up here because it's powered and in a downward slope, and then go up, break into the cactus. The uh, mine cart would just break as one entity gets sucked up but the like say a chest minecart would break into two entities minecart and chest separately so then we have a sorter here another one separates out those four items the furnace chest tnt and hopper and then those get pushed down here and go into that same stream as the unloader and gets ordered again but the chest, on the other hand, is the only thing left over, goes into this dropper, which is sent down that pipeline, and elevator up and put into the minecart chest up there, where all the only minecarts are stored in that chest. Now for the boats. So then the boats, on the other hand, as well as the armors and tools and all that, will drop down into here. The boats, when dis um, dispensed onto water, will float on the water float down onto the cactus break into a floating entity which there's a hopper minecart you can kind of see it a little bit through the sand uh, in the our hopper it's inside the sand we place the minecart on a rail hopper minecart on a rail break the rail and then place sand above it it drops and they become one essentially that way otherwise the boat would break and get half of them would get destroyed um, and then the other half would get sucked up. This way we're able to obtain all the boats and then that's brought into this dispenser and shot down another water pipeline and put into the boat storage. Uh, everything that's not one of those items that were aforementioned, like say armor, tools, and other items that haven't been programmed into the sword, or well, actually all stackable items are already filtered out. The non-stackable items that haven't been designed in the system will drop down into that hopper straight down and then get sent down this pipeline which then gets elevated up and put into the, over, uh, the overflow system as well. And so that's that. So hope you guys enjoyed the system. If there's any particular portion of the system you want to be going over more in depth, I'll make another video. Um, but until next time, this is Repairman doing all kinds of redstone stuff. And don't forget, guys, this is a 24-7 PlayStation server. So if you want to join our server, feel free and shoot me a message. Make sure that you send a message in there letting me know you have a mic and your age because we only accept members that are adults and uh, verify it by mic and also make sure you're someone that's gonna fit with our community alright hope you guys have a good one until next time